My name is Philip Lubin. I'm a professor of physics at the UC Santa Barbara. And my primary area of, of work is in uh, early universe studies. So this work on uh, planetary defense comes from a completely different direction for me. The question we were looking at is could one design a, a credible uh, uh, and, and feasible, albeit difficult, uh, system to, to uh, provide planetary defense? As we saw recently with the uh, kit in Russia, uh, that uh, we are bombarded, uh, actually literally every day, by extraterrestrial material in the form of meteoritic debris. And occasionally, we will get hit by something large enough to uh, catch our attention. Every day, for example, we have about 100 tons of material bombarding us. But it's in the form of relatively small particles which burn up in the atmosphere and generally don't make it to the ground in any significant way. The question is, can you do something about it? Do you have to simply uh, you know, sort of, you know, take it? Do you have to just duck and cover? you just have to hope that you don't uh, die in one of these events? Or you know, are we at the point in our uh, technological evolution to do something about it? So our, our approach to this is not a, a science fiction approach, but say, let's say it's a science fact-based approach. We looked at existing technologies that came out of another program that we were involved in. And we said, could we scale this up to a level which would be useful for planetary defense? So the, the idea is you take a series of individual lasers, and you phase lock them together, and you spread them out over a sufficient distance so that the diffraction limit of the system at large distances, and in our case, we want to begin to interdict or begin to um, uh, divert or vaporize uh, uh, portions of the asteroid at a very large distances so we have sufficient time. We don't wait until they're a day away from us. We would like to start months to a year out. So our, our basic goal was to design a system which could begin uh, interdiction. And in this case, interdiction means begin vaporization. And it doesn't happen like in Star Wars where you push the button and the whole thing blows up. It begins as a very slow uh, vaporization process, much like uh, boiling a pot of water on your stove. You, you need to concentrate the light into a small enough spot to raise the temperature high enough to begin the vaporization. In order to do that, and in order to begin the process at one astronomical unit, which is the mean distance from the Earth to the Sun, also approximately the distance from here to Mars, you need a system, uh, given the current technology, uh, which uh, for the moment, the, the sweet spot in terms of high efficiency devices, high efficiency lasers that are phase lockable is right around one micron, 1.06, a little more precise. You need a structure, therefore, that is between one kilometer and 10 kilometers uh, on a side in order to form the phased array that produces both enough power and a small enough spot on the asteroid to begin the uh, evaporation process. Luckily, this is not a very high density device. The total amount of mass is, is not as, as large as you might imagine. It's not a, a kilometer cubed. It's basically a kilometer squared, and it's not very thick. It can be quite, quite thin, actually. And it's, uh, it doesn't have to be that massive. And we don't need to launch it as a, a single unit. It's actually a series of uh, submodules, every submodule of which is an individual laser uh, uh, plus optical element, and they can be quite small, as small as you uh, as you want. Basically, it could be hand size, although the optimum is probably more like the, uh, sh the shroud size of a typical launch vehicle, which is roughly three to four meters in diameter. So our worst case analysis um, says that we need about 70 gigawatts of power. Well, that's a huge amount of power. A typical nuclear power plant is about one gigawatt electrical. But if you ask how much power do you get from the sun, on the same size structure that you need to form the diffraction limited spot on the asteroid, the answer is you get just what you need. You get the same amount of power from the sun. Uh, so the basic idea is take sunlight, have a section of the system which is a photovoltaic panel. There's no nuclear reactors on board. There's no other power source. It's simply powered by the sun. Take the uh, sunlight, convert it through photovoltaics. But because the system is modular, because each subsystem is in fact its own unit, um, you could build up the system from uh, a very small level to a very large level. So we advocate not building the largest system at this point at all. We advocate building small systems, testing them, debugging them, testing them on the ground, 
uh, perhaps uh, doing some other suborbital testing, and then go to an orbital-based system uh, later, but not, not to go all in one step. Well, not everything that threatens the planet is a, a, a rocky body. We are threatened also by comets, which evaporate at much lower temperatures. So some of the low-hanging fruit, if you want to think of it in terms of planetary defense, would be things like comets that perhaps would come relatively close in passes before um, a hit. So we could start with those that evaporate at temperatures of order of three to 500 Kelvin, say, um, versus the rocky asteroids, which we need to get up to several thousand Kelvin to evaporate. And one of the more interesting immediate applications for this system doesn't have to be a very large one, it could even be a 10 meter class, is for space debris. Well, this is actually a good way to get rid of space debris. You can actually vaporize the space debris at fairly large distances. But you can imagine applications for this that are um, futuristic in, in orientation. But just because things are futuristic doesn't mean that you shouldn't think about them. If they require a miracle, then you can maybe dismiss them out of hand until the miracle occurs. But this, this does not require a miracle. This is a hard engineering problem. And it does require a number of innovations in terms of large structures, but it's not does not require miracles.